Thank you, Madam Speaker. Since the beginning of the pandemic, the Standing Committee on Health has worked long hours to make sure that we heard from stakeholders across Canada on the government's response to the outbreak of COVID-19. I'm proud of the work that we've accomplished, and I'm especially proud of the way the committee members were able to work together collaboratively to do our jobs and to support Canadians. A lot has changed since then. While claims have been made on intentions to collaborate, there's been no action to prove it. And I'm frustrated and disappointed in the Conservatives' new approach on the, on the Health Committee. We did not always agree before, but it was always clear that everyone on the committee had a common goal to be productive rather than play partisan games. The motion before us today sets out 16 areas of study and six requests for the production of papers. Again, 16 areas of studies. This will prevent the committee from doing a proper study on any of these issues, looking at key issues and hearing from important witnesses across the country. Earlier this year, in over 34 meetings of the Health Committee, we heard from 171 witnesses and received 51 informative briefs covering many important issues. But Madam Speaker, only one of the 34 meetings that we held over the spring and summer focused on mental health. And while it was enough to open our eyes, it was certainly not enough for us to get a better understanding of the situation that we are facing relative to the mental health of Canadians. With this in mind, when we met again on October the 9th, I introduced a motion to the committee to study the impacts of COVID-19 on the mental health and the well-being of Canadians, including recommendations to specifically look at the impacts on Indigenous peoples, racialized Canadians, and vulnerable populations, the effectiveness and the availability of virtual mental health services, and how our government can assist the provinces and territories. I was disappointed when my colleague from Calgary and Nose Hill moved to adjourn debate on this study without so much as an opportunity for us to discuss its importance so that her motion could be introduced. But not before saying, and I quote, I really do find a lot of encouragement in the spirit of this motion that's on the floor. I try to put a lot of my personal life I try not to put a lot of my personal life in the public domain, but as someone who is separated from her family due to COVID-19 measures, I understand the impact on mental health on some of these measures. Talking to other people who are in situations similar to mine, I know that it's tough and that it's, that's just one of a group of people. There are people who have lost their jobs, are experiencing domestic violence or mental health breakdowns. And I certainly think something that it's important for our committee to look at. But her own October 19th motion had mental health listed as only one topic of 17 study, only one out of 17. In the motion before us today, that number is zero. That's unacceptable. But apparently that's how important my call to be, not even worthy of mention. And while I appreciate the member from Calgary Nose Hill finding encourage, encouragement in my motion, I wish I could say the same for the one that has been presented in committee and the one that's being debated today. As a matter of fact, I'm actually discouraged by these motions and their complete disregard for Canadians during these challenging times. Madam Speaker, there's no doubt that COVID-19 has been one of the greatest challenges that we've ever faced. Across the country, we're hearing lots of anecdotal evidence about the increased risk that some people may have in terms of depression, psychological distress, substance abuse, and PTSD surfacing as a result of the pandemic. Many experts have labeled this mental health situation as a second pandemic. That's how serious it is. But there's no doubt that mental health needs to be a priority for all of us right now. We need an informed strategy on mental health going forward. And most importantly, we need to act while we have time before this crisis becomes worse. I'm by no means suggesting that, the, that this is the only good idea, much less the only key issue surfacing from the, pandem from the pandemic. The essence of committee work 
and of compromise is to work as a team in the best interest of Canadians in setting priorities to study. What we have found in front of us today is a motion that sets out 16 areas of study and six requests for the production of papers. A general all-encompassing motion such as this one takes away the opportunity for the committee to properly focus on priority areas like the ones recommended by the 171 witnesses we heard from earlier this year. One of the strengths of the studies of smaller groups is that we are able to make well-informed, targeted recommendations that will have a real impact on the lives of, of Canadians. And a scope as large as 16 areas of study waters down our ability to do that. I'm genuinely concerned that out of 16 areas of study before us today, there's not a single mention of looking at the impacts of COVID-19 on the mental health and the well-being of Canadians. This is unacceptable, Mr. Spe Madam Speaker. In the motion we are debating today, I also don't see a mention of looking at the impacts of the pandemic on high-risk groups like Indigenous peoples, racialized Canadians and vulnerable populations. We need to consider these groups so that we can develop programs to effectively help them. As I have said before, and I will say again, if we have too many priorities, 16 to be exact, we have no priorities at all. And do you want to know what's not a priority in the motion presented today? Mental health of Canadians during these challenging times. Madam Speaker, I will not be supporting the motion in front of us today, and I hope my colleagues will follow suit. All of us in this house have an opportunity to get ahead of the second pandemic, but what's being proposed today will not get us there. If we don't take the appropriate steps to act now while we can, the outcome will be on all of us, but especially on those who choose to move forward without giving this matter the attention it deserves. This second pandemic can't be fixed with a vaccine, Madam Speaker, but we can get ahead of it if we collaborate and we focus our work on how we can best support Canadians. Thank you, Madam Speaker.